Hey, Vilcoman, all y'all to the worm. Weather is getting narnar. It's actually pretty warm. It's above freezing right now. We're supposed to get this big snowstorm. Temperature went up a couple degrees and all it did was rain. And it's supposed to get really cold now and blow really hard for a couple days. So got a couple things I want to finish up on the cabin. I gotta admit, they're a little bit weird, but pretty fun. And it just, it's stuff that needs to be done. One thing I just thought of is no cabin is really complete unless you have a rifle over the door. So I'm gonna get my 22 out of here. And actually, one of the other things I'm gonna do is build a platform and like a change container for my, <laughs> for my gumball machine that you guys saw in the last video. I think it needs its own cool varnished shelf. And then since you do actually have to put coins in it in order to get an almond M&M out, I think I'm going to 3D print some coins. And if I got to fire up the 3D printer and the CAD program, maybe I'll 3D print some hooks, like some rifle hooks to put over the door. Yeah, let's grab the rifle and see uh, how it looks over the door in the first place. Check out this place all cleared out. The bunk folded up. Look at there's empty shelves. Isn't that something? And I got most of my uh, Ryobi tools on shelves, so they're not in the lean-to anymore. Just getting gnarly with condensation. Even going to have some extra shelves to organize some nails and such. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to have to dig through my lumber piles yet again to see what I have to build these shelves and such with. If I don't have the right stuff, I got this log set up here. All set to mill. I mean, the weather's kind of gross right now. It's about to start blowing and all this wetness in the trees is going to come down. I kind of don't want to be out here and get soaked. But if we can't find the right lumber, we'll get out the uh, giant chainsaw and mill and rip that stuff down in no time. You should definitely go there, don't you think? Looks extra cabiny. Oh yeah, I've got a little bit of this uh, PLA plastic that uh, has wood in it. Let's see. We got gray, silver. Here's glow in the dark. I was thinking about using for the coins for the gumball machine. Yeah, here's the wood PLA. I mean, it looks looks kind of brownish, but it has a different like I don't know sheen to it. It's really dull. Apparently, it does really have wood in it. So we could use that to print a couple couple hooks up there. So you guys probably saw in the last video, I had to take that cool big wish, wishbone leg out of here that was kind of propping up this corner of the table because it had bugs in it. I think once it turned the heater on in here they you know thought it was springtime and all came alive and there was like sawdust falling on the floor so took that out. It's too bad because it looked really cool but it did free up this whole corner so I think we should put like a couple of shelves right here so we need like 54. Maybe I can attach them to the wall on that side and maybe use this little strut here for that side of it. Oh yeah, but importantly, the gumball machine. So, for lack of a better place, I think we'll just put it right here. So maybe we'll make a shelf that comes out, maybe come out a little extra far, and then put a bin, like edges around it. So, and then you can keep all the coins or 3D printed coins on there. I found this giant thing in my pile, and I couldn't quite imagine why I had a two inch board just sitting there, is this. Yeah, that's almost two inches. And then this side <laughs> is less than one and a half. And then you come down to this end, and here you've got one and a quarter and one. This is one of the boards that uh, was the first one we milled with the new mill. And the clamps uh, to measure the depth of the cut on one end or the other came unclamped once or twice <laughs> while we were milling this. so. I mean, it's a weird shape. It's not gonna matter for a shelf underneath my desk, so I think we just cut it up. What the heck? <laughs> it's one inch short. Let's just cut them both one inch short and we'll figure something out. Stick a one inch board in there to space it out. This isn't the best way to do this with a heavy board. We'll just let it fall. I was hoping I was going to have 
enough of that board left over to do the gumball machine too. Actually, that's small enough we might find some cool scraps under the cabin that'll work. Ugh. Oh, stupid weather. This would be a good day to be inside. Maybe I'll go inside once I get these made. Spend the rest of the day around the fire? Heater. <laughs> it's making my eyes water, that wind. And sleety snow. Ooh, I didn't check to see if that's one inch. It is, don't worry. I think two shelves might have been too much under there. I wanted to fit as many as possible, but I'm not going to be able to put too much stuff in here. Oh man, sometimes I build things and then i uh, not really sure how to install them. I don't know how I'm going to pick this up there. Let's see, if I lift this up, you stick this underneath there, alright? I'll put it right there for you. Oh my gosh. I didn't do this right at all. This is not cut the right height. Crapolovich. I was thinking this was going to go all the way up to here, but I got that in the way. Huh. Guess we'll take it back out and cut it then, won't we? I got it. Don't worry. All better now. Anybody got a hammer handy? Where did I put that thing? Oh, here it is. There's a hammer. This stuff fits, just barely. I have to put that on my list of uh, things to pull out and varnish. As always, I'll just have to leave the shelf up there for a while until the lumber dries out. It's screwed to both ends and into the stud, so I don't think it's going to warp much. And I mean, it's hidden shelves anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. I think I've decided that uh, all of this kind of stuff, like the nice fat wood, desk, shelves, gumball machine whatever we build for that like that kind of stuff I'm gonna varnish with um, oil based because it makes the green look really nice but it makes it yellow which is kind of nice like a nice deep rich color and then all the stuff that's not like this accented stuff I think I'll do with water based but as Tito pointed out if you do everything the same like this desk won't even it won't stand out and stuff like my glove box here like this is really pretty wood and I think, oh, I'm going to redo these w window sills too, make them stick out a little bit more. But I'll choose some nice wood for that. So maybe do that with oil, that with oil. But if this is oil, then I don't know, everything just disappears. So we'll do that with the water base. And my understanding is the water base stain just doesn't bring the grain out quite as much. It'll protect the wood and even put a sheen on the wood. But it'll basically leave it looking like it does before you varnish over it. Oh, now, now time for the fun part. I was just thinking if I could find, I don't know if I have any scraps of this left. I probably do have a little piece. I could do just like this, actually set it back. And then we want some kind of a pocket here for our fake change. Oh, you know what would actually look really cool if I could do it well, which I probably can't. <laughs> I could uh, route out a pocket there. It's the only scrap I could find in my bin. It's not the super pretty stuff, but I guess you're not really going to see it because the machine will be on there. So we'll leave that edge on it. That can, that can face the room. Well, I'm actually only going to be able to get it into one stud. I don't know if that's going to work. Well, let's try it out. How far do we want it to stick out? 
Maybe here-ish? Good enough. Yeah, I guess we'll put that side up. enough. It's really heavy. It's definitely going to have to be dried out for a while before I can sand it or varnish it. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. And there. And there? With maybe a radius somewhere around a camping spice container. Seems like about the right size. Seems to me you'd want to do this several times, like only cut out, a, I don't know, a quarter inch or something. But this router has such a small platform, if I go all the way around it once, it's not going to have anything to sit on. So, actually, let's try this on a scrap. This thing's soaking wet, but let's see if it'll work. I guess that's as far out as it goes. but it's slow to weasel it out of there. Whatever, I'm going for it. way too much work for a little battery powered uh, Dremel like that. Dremel? What is that thing called? Router. Router like that. I mean it works great unless you're, that's an inch. It's cut an inch of wood at a time. It was a lot of work for it. But it came out pretty nice. Just the edges are a little bit not, they're not perfectly smooth because you can't really see down inside there with this thing. I don't know if you can see that in there. Not perfectly smooth. There you can see a little better. A little bumpy. I'm just gonna take the Dremel and see if I can knock a few of those off. Man, I got it all done. And then the last thing I did, I accidentally tipped the router in there. Gouged a little bit, but we'll just keep it full of uh, plastic pennies. I set it a little bit too low. I don't know where we'll put it, somewhere right there. <laughs> That's great. I wonder if I can get this to dry out a little. Put it in the, uh, the old microwave here. Got these two oh, nice and muddy corners of pretty nice cedar. I was thinking about hanging them under here as a paper towel holder. Maybe we could just drill a hole through here. Oh, why don't we grab a aspen sapling and stick it through there. See if we can find us a paper towel skewer. Lots of good ones out here.
perfect. <laughs> Whew, the temp is dropping fast. I think I'm uh, done out here today. Maybe head inside, edit some videos, mm, or just play with the 3D printer. See if we can make some gun hooks. Oh, feels good in here. Oh, I gotta get a shower before it gets any colder. Let's go light it up, shall we? I think I got a bucket of water, at least ice chips out here. with a little water. Love the crazy ice cubes you get in these buckets. That's a cool one. It's like perfectly cupped out. I guess we'll save that for the next shower. In the summer, I use a, like a regular Vic stick lighter in here, but in the winter, of course, lighters don't work that well. So I've been using one of these things, but it's kind of running out of, well, it's working now. Running out of spark. Check this thing out I found online. How cool is that? <laughs> A little bit of ice in it. It's gonna take about 18 minutes. If I forget to set it for 18 minutes, I'll come back in here and the water will be boiling. And if I don't have other ice water or something, I'm kind of screwed. The infrared thermometer doesn't work very well in here either when it's super cold. So I got myself a selection. We've got the crab, and then we've got old Smokey the Bear that we've used in the hot tub for years. He's kind of falling apart. And then also a nice classic ducky. I find the crab gives me the best uh, shower temperature, but you know, any of them will work. Okay, you guys stay here if you want. Man, it was, uh, it rained, temperature dove, got so cold yesterday. Everything out here that I've walked on or driven the four wheeler over was solid ice. I went out basically only one time to make lunch right there and it was so slippery that I decided I was gonna spend the rest of the day in here. So I napped a lot, did a little uh, editing, just generally screwed around, which is kind of nice to take a day off like that. Something like that. You'll notice there aren't very many, very many coins left because most of them are in here by now. I could tell that it was drying stuff out so fast that I put my uh, paper towel holders up there too. Oh, and my uh, Aspen, wow. It's a lot, lot thinner than it was. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to put some stops on the end of it. I'm trying to think if I should varnish this stuff now. Maybe I should take my hat bin down and put it up there for a day or two. And then, I don't know, maybe tomorrow I could take all this stuff in the uh, man cave and varnish. In the meantime, shall we get out, get out the 3D printer and uh, see if we can make some coins? Get all the garbage out of here. Storage garbage. I think a quarter is about as big as fits in there, so let's just make it that size to start. If I can get, oh, I can't get it out. I guess I'll just have to put it in there. <laughs> about 25 millimeters by 1.75 millimeters. We'll have to just keep, we'll make a few different thicknesses of them and keep jamming them in there until they won't go anymore. I'll make it as thick as possible. It'll give it a little more heft, but it'll also give me more room to put the letters and relief in there. So, I'll make a circle of that diameter. Actually, why don't we do several of them different thickness? Do one, 1.75, and then we'll do this one two millimeters, and we'll do this one 2.25 ish. Let's do glow in the dark, shall we? This 
This might not work. That is using a ton of power. 430 watts. That'll drain this battery completely in two, a little over two hours. So this is preheating this platform right here so that the parts stick better and the nozzle that's actually going to extrude the plastic. I might have to wait to preheat this or even see if I can maybe get it to stick without preheating this at all because I bet that's what's taking most of the power. Yeah, that went from 430 watts to 130 watts. So that's a lot better. If nothing else, it won't preheat this until we absolutely have to. But I do have to preheat this, the uh, extruder, the actual hot tip, in order to get the old plastic out of here and get the new stuff primed in there. Looks like the last stuff I used was gray, I guess. You can see that's pushing the old plastic out of there. It's cool when you extrude this in a dark room, this glow-in-the-dark filament actually lights up from the heat from the extruder tip. I'm going to switch this out for the bigger jackery because it's got 25% more power, but also this is just built differently. This will charge. I can recharge this in like a couple hours. The other one takes five or six hours. So if I run this dead today, it'll be quick to recharge up the generator. I just realized, I think I did this last time. This is a horrible idea. Printing with this white clear plastic, you won't hardly be able to see it on the camera. But it's all set to go, so let's just do it. Oh, let's see what the output goes up to on here once it starts heating. 500 watts. This plastic is incredibly old, so hopefully it'll still work actually coming out of there really crunchy looking not smooth maybe it won't work this plastic doesn't last forever it's actually if I keep it in a dry bag with some a bunch of desiccant at the bottom of it because over time just moisture from the air will soak into the plastic and ruin it and some of the plastic in here has got to be six eight maybe older years old so I don't know even the youngest plastic is probably four years old yeah, it's really hard to see, but it's not really working very well. Well, this is a small print. They're only, uh, you know, three tiny coins, so it's already 40% done. They're going to be junk. They're not really going to be usable, but I'm going to let them go and see if, see if their thickness comes out right so we can just see if they'll fit in the machine. I don't think I'm going to be able to make my gun hooks uh, on the 3D printer. I just, I didn't realize how much power this thing drew. It took a lot of power to get up to temperature. Now it's running at about 200 watts. It's still, I mean, it's two to 300 watts. It's still a lot of power. And a big print, like a couple of big uh, hooks for my rifle is just not going to, it's not going to do it. I'd have to run the generator. I'm not going to run the generator just to print those. So maybe we'll make the coins out of plastic and we'll make the hooks out of wood. Might as well listen to some tunes while we're waiting. Actually, it's not really that bad. Just gonna clean them up a little bit. Can you see them glowing? I think at least two of these would be fine for measurement. One's a little weird. Man, I'm so obsessed with this uh, Tedeschi Trucks uh, video. It's the version on YouTube I love, probably because that's the one I saw first, but uh, Gravity. I I don't link to a lot of outside videos, but I'll put a link to it in the description of this video just so you can hear it. His slide playing, I mean, it's a great song, great piano, great horns, great singing, but his slide playing, the tone of his guitar is just so great. And every time he plays, it's got like three or four spots throughout the song. It sounds like it just gets more aggressive. Oh, I've already listened to it like four times today. I think I'll uh, just do it right, right now, one more time. So, same size as a quarter. Thin one first. Should be the same as a quarter. And it doesn't have the weight. Hmm. Hmm? Oh. Okay, 
You have to go thinner. You hear that guitar tone? Oh, you can't hear it, can you? Trust me, it's good. <laughs> Crap, I kind of need that uh, biscuit back. I don't even know how to get them out of here. Takes a lot of testing. Probably better try it one more time. A little bit too thick. A couple more tests though. The quarter is about 1.7 millimeters. And I think I printed this 1.7 or 1.75. It came out to about two. So just have to narrow it up by a quarter of a millimeter and it should fit fine in there. It's not gonna be very fancy, but it'll be something. There we go. That looks nice. It looks all right on the computer. If we were making something bigger, you could make like cool design and stuff, but this is so small. That's probably going to look pretty muddy when we print it out, but let's give it a go. Let's print a dozen of them. While we're waiting for that to print, I guess I'll make some gun hangers. So we can make whatever we want that size. Looks like a salad dressing cap is about the right diameter, wouldn't you say? I think so. That would be okay, but I'm actually thinking if I slid this whole thing up, I could get one screw in here and then I could make a spot to put a screw in the bottom too, so why don't we do that? Scoot it up quite a ways. How about right there? And then what if we made some like weird rounded edges on here? I could round that. Oh, I could round that later. Yeah. I could just do like this or something. Round that. Oh, actually we we're using this one, so we could go way up. That and like I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut that radius. Be alright. Kind of weird, maybe around this, around these. Actually, I still want to get a screw in there, which would probably work, but there's plenty of room to get it up here, so let's move this whole thing up some more. on the coins on the left it just started the layer with the rw and the dollar sign the ones on the right bottom aren't quite there yet i think i have to find a whatever inch drill bit the salad cap was just drill those and then i could do the rest with the jigsaw yeah i was just kind of dreading getting all dressed up i was hoping today is really windy i was hoping to stay here in here all day so i don't really want to put all my winter clothes on you know i just realized i have a freaking tool room i'm gonna go in the man cave turn the heater on and work in there <laughs> uh, that's so rad i guess it's actually still gonna be kind of cold in there for a little bit but let's go kick the heater on i gotta say i didn't see this day coming three years ago when i moved out to the middle of the woods with the tent a day that I'd have a heated cabin, be running my 3D printer, and if I had a little woodworking project, I'd have a heated workroom. <laughs> so freaking cool. I guess a lot of people have the same thing. They just didn't have to build it all for themselves from the trees. Gotta be honest, I'm so used to the cold, and I'm already dressed. I don't really want the, don't need the heat on, but I'm gonna turn it on anyway, because I'm a lunatic. Let's see, we've got some tools up here. What should we use? Probably need a pad sander. Might need a grinder. Man, it's nice to have these shelf tools. To be honest, it feels really weird doing this in here since I was actually living in here for a few months. 
Oof, this is going to be ugly. I'm not a fan of jigsaws. I mean, the thing they should do, they end up, I guess if you were doing really thin wood or something, it'd be fine, but they're so bendy. Well, they're either bendy or you get a really thick blade that makes it so you can't turn tight corners. I'm just a whiner. Oh, Ooh, gotta remember to drill those holes out. Yeah, I don't think I have one that big. I guess we're doing one and a quarter. Woo, that is not sharp. Should probably stop and sharpen it, but nah, it's only two holes. Okay, maybe a little sharpening. Not a great job, but I bet it'll cut. Wow. It's not so much that, it's the wet, stringy wood. God, these are ugly. So ugly. Too boxy. I'm gonna have to whittle them down. I'm going to take the router to them and see if I can thin everything out a little bit. Still pretty ugly, but maybe I'll do after I sand it down. It does help. That's uh, unrouted, just looks really chunky. Routed is a little bit better. It's still pretty chunky. I'm glad I didn't do two inch thick, but I was afraid if I made this stuff too thin this way, that if it was thin this way, it would crack. But that'll definitely, that'll hold a cannon. I'd like to put them up, but I think they need to be varnished first. Let's see if it fits though. Oh yeah, it's a nice fit. And our coins. A little choppy, it's too bad. If they could be a little thicker, they'd look nicer. They sound nice though. Oh, that's cool. Tomorrow's supposed to be reasonable weather. I think high in the mid-30s, not too windy, whatever. Maybe it doesn't matter. I think we'll fire up the uh, heater in the man cave, varnish all this stuff, varnish this too, and whatever else I can find around here. Might be able to get it all done in a day. And then we'll put all this stuff together. Yeah, actually, I think this is even dry enough because this was under a tarp and actually stickered the whole time. Can't wait for tomorrow. Kind of can't always wait for the next tomorrow. Came out here a little bit ago, turned the heater on, got my window box for my gloves, my gumball machine thing, paper towel rack, gun holders. I meant to get up a lot earlier and do this. It's already like nine o'clock. I actually put all my drying stuff up there and then I could put a little fan on it. I think I can get three coats today maybe. I might have to do the last one just before I go to bed, like come out here at nine or something and put it on there. Wow, that's gorgeous, huh?
jacket. I got three coats on there. Looks pretty good. It's not a hundred percent set up, but you know these aren't going to get any wear or anything, so I want to put them up. These are kind of nice actually. Now that they're completed, this is the best part. Isn't that sweet? Really nice piece of lumber. I didn't really have anything great for this. I checked through all my boxes of junk, so <laughs> just put a screw in a washer to keep it from falling out. And then the other end for now is just a clip. But I think that should work. But seriously, come on, that's cedar. That's the noise it makes. Uh, I thought about only because the <laughs> only because these are still, I mean, they're not even tacky, but you can tell it's not completely set up. That I'd put something in there, like just temporarily, and then I thought, well, actually, I've got some leather. I could just cut little leather patches and put them in there. I don't know what kind of glue I've got here. I got super glue. Isn't real great for leather because it soaks in. Well, I might have some shoe glue. We could shoe glue them in there. Actually, I have a couple whole hides, and I cut out just kind of the piece that I wouldn't use for something big made out of leather. That'll be good for a pad. Yeah, that'll work pretty nicely. some shoe glue somewhere. Ooh, forgot about that cool knife. Weird flat blade. It's not actually all that useful. It's fun to sharpen though. Oh, you ever seen these? These are for practice lock picking. They're really cool. No, there's nothing wrong with learning to lock pick. It's not about breaking into places, but this is sweet. You can see the uh, pins inside and I got a whole set of rakes and what not to pick different locks. Really fun to do. Aha! Shoe glue. It's pretty old, but it feels soft. Oh yeah, there's a different kind of lock. Practice. Get these online. It's really fun. I mean, there are people that actually compete in this, in uh, lock picking. Of course, I have no idea where the picks went. Yeah, it's a toothbrush though, that's nice. Aha! Found the picks. I don't know if you can see them all. All different shapes and sizes. Hundred bucks as I get this all over my hands and everything else. Not a hundred. Uh, it's going pretty well. Maybe five. Nope, not five. Uh, let's just pass on that whole bat. That worked just fine. Cool. Once again, isn't it amazing what you can make from a tree with a chainsaw? and the help of a cow <laughs> really i mean it's just a chunk of a tree out here and for the record you owe me at was it a thousand a hundred i can't remember at least five bucks because i did get it all over everything i'll stick these on the drying rack for a few while we figure out the gumball machine this thing is incredibly handy i use it just about every day for something whether it's drying this or my gloves or boot liners that was a great idea if i do i mean if i do it's, I got some good ideas. I'm not really sure where to put this. Uh, since 
like everything else, I don't really want to put a brace on it. It would have to go onto a stud, and even then it'd be, I don't know, good chance it wouldn't be firm enough, but uh, it just seems kind of weird floating out there between the heater and the desk. I kind of like it there, but there's no stud there. I don't want to put it there because it's taking up desk space. Okay, how about this? How about if I put it where I want it to go, about there, and then I make a really weird brace. I could get like, just go find a fat stick. I mean, if it went out and then branched sideways, I could still screw it into here and I could notch it out to go on the side of this. That'd look better than just a triangle. All right, let's go look for a stick. If I can find something easy and nearby and sort of dry, we'll just do that. Unfortunately, right now, most of the sticks are still under snow. Yeah, I need, need something with almost a 90 degree angle to it. Oh, maybe there's something on this guy I cut down. See, something like this would work if I just kept this little piece here to screw into the stud and then this could run down and screw into the little shelf. Might be a little too beastly, but let's try it. What do you think? Could we make that work somehow? Yeah, I don't know. I can't really tell if it's going to be good enough. <gasps> oh, the vibration going through my arm is making my nose itch. <laughs> so flat side goes against the stud. I think we can make that work. Man, that is wet. Well, I'll try not to scrape up the inside too much because it's nice and smooth. How many days is this going to take to cook on my uh, microwave in there? Let's just see. I wonder how high this meter goes, because this is like wet. Wow, 42% water. <laughs> 31. 38. Wow. It's clearly not going to dry the whole thing all the way through in a day, but all I need is for, you know, a little bit on the outside to dry out just so I can shape it a tiny bit. Now it's for real. It's It just got real, yo. Can it fall out of there, I wonder? Nope, that's it. Nice. Let's see what we got here. Of course, I can't even remember what the numbers were before. 11%, 16%, and then the part we really want to grind out 14.5, I think that'll work. You know what I wonder? Of course, this has to be a lot drier on the outside than the inside. I wonder if you just barely push this in here and get a reading. Yeah, 5%. Did you jam it in there? Yep. 12, 13, 18, 19. Yeah, so the inside's still really wet, but that'll work for us. So let's check this one more time. That goes flat on the stud. So it looks like... I'm just gonna get one screw in each of these, I think. And these uh, did kind of warp as it was drying out, so I'll see if I can flatten that out a little bit better. Actually, a lot stronger than I thought it would be. Just screwed into that one little skinny wall board. 
I mean, that would actually be fine, but at some point it'll get bumped. This is like the most necessary thing in here. And some nice ringworm coins. Uh, let's just see here, maybe this one. <laughs> lovely. Just lovely. I think that worked out great. These things especially looked really cool last night when I turned the uh, lights off in here before I went to bed. When I looked over there, it was just a pile of coins glowing. Oh, by the way, you guys saw the uh, episode where I insulated the floor with that uh, bubble foil. We were keeping track of the floor temperatures in here. The best I could figure, the floor temperatures went up 5 to 6 degrees after insulating it. With just like an eighth of an inch of insulation with foil on it. It's crazy. I stopped keeping track of this, though, because the spots I was shooting on the floor... If you guys don't remember, I was just writing down the inside temperature, the outside temperature, and then shooting four different places on the floor with the infrared thermometer. And once I moved in here, stuff kind of got put on three of the four spots I was shooting. So afterwards, I'm shooting right next to them, and the temperatures can be really different. So I quit writing them down. If you can't shoot the exact same spot, what's the point? But it made, it made a pretty big difference. And one thing I've noticed is the propane is lasting like twice as long. I keep going out there every day to check and see if I've got a bottle that ran out, and it, it hasn't. It was definitely worth doing. I think that was 50 bucks worth of that bubble foil that I put under the floor. Got one more thing to do today that I'm not really looking forward to is crawling back under here. You know where I put the insulation up and had those edges and stapled to the edges? I did it with one of those hammer staplers, so I couldn't get it right up tight, and I only stapled maybe once a foot. And it made me think, as soon as the bugs come out this spring, I can almost guarantee that they're going to climb up behind that foil and just, you know, make nests in there. Maybe start eating the floor, or the floor joist or something. So I'm going to go around with the regular stapler and put it right up to the edge and staple it every few inches. I'd be really happy if any of you wanted to take over and do that because I don't feel like climbing under there again. After that and only after that, I'm going to get out the, the big mill and uh, mill up this log because I want to do some shelves on that back wall. Another big shelf underneath the desk. And a couple other things, but I want it, as always, I want it from at least two inch boards so they're nice and fat. And then I'm kind of hoping that Tito comes out this weekend because I went out yesterday and bought myself a little something. It's a kind of luxury that I've never owned before. It's going to be pretty great, but I can't get it back here by myself. It's crazy. You're going to try to get it back here on a four-wheeler. Anyway, come back if you want. Maybe you'll see what I look like comfortable. I don't know. Thanks for watching.